Hi mamas, I am Carrie Biscalonis here with Mental Health Mondays with Detroit Moms and Reset Brain and Body. Today I want to talk to you about what we do when our partner is not growing with us. And so a lot of times, and I know that this will be difficult to sit with and understand, we have to first ask ourselves, how did we get here? So for a lot of us, life has changed. We have grown simply because we have gotten older and life has gotten more complicated. Perhaps kids have been added into the family and life has just gotten busier and more difficult. But a lot of times we have to dig a little bit deeper and ask ourselves truly, how did we get here? Why am I over here and my partner is over here? And that starts with asking ourselves, well, who was I and who was my partner when we first got together? One of my favorite things to talk about is this idea that we date at the level of our self-esteem. And so what I mean by that is that perhaps when you met your partner, when you were in your 20s, you had a certain level of self-esteem, which then allowed you to have a certain level of expectations for a partner. You had a certain sense of worth and self-respect and uh, had a certain level of what you felt like you deserved. And then you found a partner that matched that. Now, if you had really low self-esteem and you were feeling desperate or that you didn't actually deserve that much, you may have entered into a partnership with someone who may not be now meeting your expectations as you've grown or developed more self-esteem. You may have had low expectations back then that now are starting to show up later in life because perhaps when you met someone, you were not at the highest point in your life and you settled for someone that you thought that was all that you could get. I know this is hard to hear. And I think what I want you to ask yourself is, well, even if that's not your current situation, have you been in relationships in the past where that was the case, where you did grow apart because you realized like, gosh, this person can't give me what I need anymore. And it's because you grew, you evolved, you wanted more and they just simply couldn't give it to you anymore. Is your marriage, is your partnership by any chance a victim of that same situation? And so we really do have to be honest with ourselves and take a hard look at our current situation and say, well, who was I when I entered into this relationship? Was I really insecure? And did I ask for too little when I entered into this relationship? And now am I asking for too much? And here's the thing, I know a lot of you are gonna say, of course I'm not asking for too much. Come on, this is what I deserve. This is what I should get. This is what I need. Yes. However, is it what you needed and what you asked for and what you deserved when you first entered into this relationship? And is this person capable of giving you those things? Most people, if they are not of growth mindset, have an upper limit, right? They have a limit where they cannot go any further. They just don't have as much to give. They, they can't grow anymore. They have limited capacity and it doesn't mean that they are a bad person. It doesn't mean that they are not good enough. It just might mean that they are not good enough for you anymore. So when we're doing some of this soul searching, some ugly stuff might come up and it might be really hard. And that's why this question is deeper than like a quick fix, right? We have to look into the deep, layers and the roots of how our relationship was even established from day one. So what was I asking for? What did I think that I deserved? What was my worth worth when I first entered into this relationship? What was my level of self-esteem? And did my partner match that? And is my partner still matching that? Have things changed? What sort of things have changed? Have my expectations changed? And now some of your expectations simply may have changed because again, you've added kids into the mix. You've, grow, you've gotten older, life is more complicated. And some of that your partner may generally be able to evolve to because you've made those decisions together. 
but are some of these things that you haven't made decisions together on? Have you changed and you're asking for things that your partner, that was never what they were into, that was never something that if you really genuinely looked at this person as an individual, as that person that you married way back when, that they ever could have fulfilled for you because this is always who they've been. So asking ourselves, is it, is it fair? Is it fair to ask this person of these things? Is it fair to expect more? When at some point I thought that this was enough, I loved this person for exactly who they are. And here's the thing, I'm not talking about like, now we have kids and they can't figure out how to change a diaper or um, they're not doing the dishes as much as I need them to. Like, come on, like these are things, you don't get divorced over you know, household tasks. <laughs> if they pile up enough, maybe. But we get divorced and things really start to tear apart when we're not communicating and we're building resentment that then turns into really ugly, ugly behavior and just really mean spirited comments that just go deep and low and hit people in their shame. That then we start to gaslight each other and we start to just hit each other where it hurts. And is it because we're expecting too much? Because at some point we drifted away from what we said was good enough to now what we're willing to expect and accept now. Okay, so you have some options, right? One of these things is, okay, when I married this person, I said that this was enough. I love this person. I said, you know, till death do us part. Or if, you know, this partnership, even if you're not married, this partnership, I said, you know, this is enough. I love this person. And so I have to accept that even if I've changed and I want more now because I've um, grown in my self-esteem because I, I've now read some books or listened to some podcasts and I've done some self-healing and I've gone to therapy and now I'm like, oh, I deserve more. I want more. I expect more. Can I demand that of my partner just because I now want more? Is that fair? And if it's not, can I expect or can I accept that this person is enough? I can see them for their limitations and I can be okay with that. And then I can find gratitude for all the ways they do add to my life. All the beautiful things that I initially fell in love with and really appreciate those and recognize like, okay, yeah, maybe they won't meet all my needs now, my new needs, but wow, they are enough in all these other buckets and that's okay. That's good enough and I'm okay with that. I can accept that. You can also model the positive change that you wanna see. You're growing, you're evolving, you're growing your self-esteem, you're raising your own potential and you want that person to grow with you, you want them to be creative and you know prioritize their health too and be a growth mindset. Okay, and you throw some podcasts their way and you give them some books ideas and you talk to them about what you talk about with your therapist and you hope that eventually someday they will join you on that road. You could do that too. Maybe they'll get there. Maybe they'll catch up. But you have to be patient because you cannot allow there to be resentment that they're not moving at the same pace as you. That's just not fair to them. Again, like you have your own journey and they have theirs. And again, when you entered into this relationship, it wasn't like, okay, and so in 10 years, we both will have gone through this whole awakening and we will have been enlightened and we will have now this, you know, whole new <laughs> mindset. Like, no, that's not fair. That's not what they signed up for. So being patient, being forgiving, throwing them some tools and just seeing what sticks. But we can't sit there and say, well, if they don't catch up, then, you know, I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be resentful. And I'm going to be so, no, like accepting them for where they are right now, throwing some things their way, modeling positive change without that resentment and the passive aggressiveness. And then maybe they'll come along. No one wants to be schooled by their partner. But if they see what good it's done for you, maybe they'll want to come along on the ride. But who's going to want to join your journey if you're being all like nasty towards them the whole way? Like you should be doing this and you should be doing that. They're like, well, I don't think your self-help journey is working too well for you. 
right? Like, they're going to call you out on that. So truly modeling, truly modeling growth is very different from just now having higher expectations. Okay. And then there's one final thing that we can do. And we can let this person go. And it's for their sake beyond yours. Because at some point, they are going to get tired of disappointing you. And that's really hard for someone. It's really hard for someone to show up day in and day out and feel like they're letting you down. And it's hard to watch someone that you once loved and accepted unconditionally feel like a failure in front of you all the time simply because you have changed and you now are expecting more. And again, this isn't something that you've done wrong. Good for you. You're growing. That's amazing. But they shouldn't have to be punished just because of it if they can't catch up. Either we accept them and say, you know what? Come with me. It's okay. I still want you by my side. I'm so grateful for all that you are. Or we let them go because it's too painful for them to feel like they can't catch up and they never will. That they don't have the ability, the potential to be at your level. And that is okay. You are letting them free. Because gosh, what happens when someone continually feels like a failure? They then sink into that shame and they make bad decisions. And they're starting to cope negatively. And then it, again, creates this awful spiral. Again, we're not getting divorced over who doesn't do the dishes. We're getting divorced over the shame that we sit in and that we is pervasive, that we're unable to let go of because we're not actually being truthful and telling each other exactly what we're supposed to be telling each other. So relationship stuff, you guys, it's never easy. It's never simple. It's not a quick fix. You got to do some digging. You really got to be honest with yourself and you got to take accountability because when your partner's not growing with you, it's not all their fault. <laughs> and I know a lot of you don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. There's two people in a partnership. If you want help, we are here for you. We have couples counselors here at Reset. We are currently having a lot of fun creating some intensive type of couples programs um, Kara, who is our couples guru, is putting together a lot of really fun programming for couples that can be preventative, but then also doing the like really good homework intensive type of work that lasts for a few weeks. But um, Dana, you're hilarious. Why can't it just be a quick fix? <laughs> Isn't there a magic pill just to make my relationship be perfect? <laughs> yeah. Well, if there was, I, I would be out of business. Um, don't necessarily want that. But we all have to rumble, as Brene Brown says, right? We gotta rumble, gotta be in the rumbling, which is just uncomfortable. But that's where the magic happens because that's where we get the clarity. So those of you that are in this situation, I am here for you. Please, let's have a dialogue. Reach out to us, specifically Kara, if you have questions, wanna, you know, again, do some digging and we'll help. But there are paths forward and they don't all have to be doom and gloom. There is hope. All right, take care everyone, happy Monday.